Welcome to the e-commerce badassery podcast, the place for scrappy female entrepreneurs who want to learn actionable steps and strategies to grow the traffic, sales, and profit in your e-commerce business. I'm your host, Jessica Totillo Coster, a 20-year retail veteran who spent three years as the only employee of a seven-figure online store. That shit was crazy. I know exactly how it feels to do all the things and I'm sharing everything I learned the hard way so you don't have to. I may have started this business by accident, but supporting badass bosses like you lights me the fuck up and I am so stoked to see you grow. Are you ready, babe? Let's roll. Welcome back to the e-commerce badassery podcast. I'm your host, Jessica Totillo Coster. If we've never met, I'm an e-commerce strategist in Clavio Ninja here to help you grow the traffic sales and profit in your e-commerce business. I also just wanted to give a shout out to everyone who has left a review for the show. I seriously appreciate you and I read every single one. Thank you so much for your amazing feedback, not only for myself, knowing that I'm on the right track and giving you the content you need to hear, but also for helping other e-commerce entrepreneurs realize that this is somewhere they want to be. I'm on a mission to help as many of you as I can, and none of us can do this alone. So thank you so much. If you didn't already know, earlier in 2021, I kicked off the e-commerce badassery megamind, which is a blend of a group program and mastermind. It's been a whirlwind six months, and I can't believe that the first round is already coming to an end. But throughout our time together, there were some major themes that kept popping up, and I wanted to share those with you today to let you know that you are not alone, and every e-commerce business owner, even those who are already making six and seven figures in their business, are struggling with the same things. And just to give you a little more color into how the program worked, we did bi-monthly deep trainings on topics like Google Analytics, launching strategy for new products, and for the last two months of the program, we're focusing on Q4 strategy. We also had an ads expert there to help strategize and troubleshoot your Facebook ads, and even a guest expert who popped in to teach PR for product-based businesses. And then, of course, there were the mastermind sessions with rotating hot seats where each member shared a struggle they were having in their business and the group got to weigh in to support them. So this gave me a lot of visibility into where everyone was at in their business, what they were working on, what they were struggling with. And I promise that these same themes kept showing up again and again. So let's hop right into it. Number one, I really just want to mention here that most small business owners are not comfortable in Google Analytics. And I know you hear me talk about it all the time and how powerful it is and how much more data you can get from it. And that is still true. But after working with so many high-level entrepreneurs and seeing the overwhelm that is the idea of even just learning how to use the platform, I just want to remind you, if that's you and you haven't been able to wrap your head around the tool and you never look at it, that's okay. You can still have a successful business without it. Number two, we're all just figuring this out as we go. Yep. Even when it seems like we have all of our shit together on the outside, a peek behind the scenes will show you that we're all struggling in one way or another. And this is precisely the reason why I always encourage you to keep your eyes on your own paper because you just don't know what is really happening in someone's business. Number three, every new level in business comes with a new set of struggles. And I'm sure you've heard this one before. And sometimes no matter how many times we hear something, we can't really understand it until it happens to us. How many times have you said to yourself, Oh, if I just made this much more money, or if I could just do X, everything would be okay. We've all said it, done it. And I'm here to say, once you hit that next income goal, Be prepared for the new struggles and uncertainty that comes with it. Number four, sometimes you have to pivot the focus in your business based on your ultimate goals. This is a really important one, so make sure you absorb it. Let's pretend you have multiple revenue streams in your business, say brick and mortar, wholesale, D2C e-commerce, and custom products. Let's also say you have a wide product assortment with two main categories of products. And as a business owner, you realize that some of those revenue streams and products are really time consuming and you want to pivot away from those and lean into the others. 
and you do. But then you've realized that growing that portion of the business you want to grow is harder than you thought. And it's not quite going at the speed you want. While the parts that you let go were more established and working well, and even though it did take more time, energy, and effort. So what do you do? Do you re-engage with those parts of your business that you were trying to let go of? Or do you continue to forge forward with the new path, even if it takes longer and your revenue takes a hit? The truth is, there is no right answer, only the answer that's right for you. Ultimately, you have to ask yourself, what is most important to you right now? When I'm giving feedback to a client or thinking through a strategy that makes sense for them, I'm always going to start with, well, what is the goal of your business and what is the priority for you today? So in this scenario I just gave you, if the priority is having a profitable business, my recommendation is going to be re-engage those parts of the business that already make money and are profitable, even if it's not 100% where you want to end up, so that you can take away some of the stress and overwhelm while you're trying to build up the other portion of your business. Sometimes we just have to take the path of least resistance. That's not to say we don't also have to step out of our comfort zone to get to our ultimate destination, but it's okay to slow down and step back once in a while so you can propel forward later. On the flip side of that, If letting go of those portions of the business were more important than generating revenue right now, I would give a different recommendation. Instead, I would say to first finalize the retirement of those products, whatever that means for you, running a sale to clear out your inventory, removing them from your website, letting your wholesale partners know, etc. That way you don't have that baggage while you're trying to ramp up this new version of your business. If you didn't already know, Back in the day, I was a personal fashion stylist, and I used to have a blog for that business. It had a lot of style-related inspiration, tips, and things like that. Not too many pictures of me because I'm certainly no fashion blogger. I eventually wanted to create an online business around it, creating courses or doing virtual styling sessions for people. But the business never went anywhere, and I eventually realized it was because I was just not that into it anymore. Yes, I'm still a total clothes horse and as obsessed with shoes as ever, and I buy shit even though I rarely leave the house these days. But for the longest time, I still owned the domain, the URL to the site, and it would renew every year and I thought maybe eventually I would do something with it. It wasn't until I joined a group women's empowerment program thing that I finally let the URL expire. And I can't tell you the weight that was lifted off of me when I finally let it go. So often we hold on to things because we feel like we already put so much time into it and it would be a shame to let it go. But in most cases, that thing is weighing you down and keeping you from growing. That's a really long-winded way of saying there is no one right way for everyone. It really depends on your goals. But if you have something you're holding on to that isn't working, but you're afraid to let it go because somehow it just means you wasted all of that time, here's your permission slip to let it go. That kind of escalated quickly. Wasn't really my intention. (laughs) So let's move on. Number five, being a leader is hard. And sometimes you have to make hard decisions about your team. After being a leader in so many businesses over the last 20 years, I can tell you people are the hardest part of any business. When you're small and just have one or two people helping you out, it can seem easy. But as you grow and your business changes, so many things can go off the rails in terms of your team. Sometimes it's because you have the wrong butts in the wrong seats. Sometimes your business grows and the people in your leadership positions don't grow with you. Or sometimes people just aren't cut out for or interested in the direction that your business is growing in. Maybe you hired for a position you thought you needed and then you realize it's not actually helping as much as you thought it would and you actually need to fill a different position. Whatever it is, you need to reassess your team on the regular and make adjustments when things aren't quite right. Number six, hire and invest before you can afford it. And I'm saying afford with air quotes. Sure, maybe you have to take a bit of a hit at first, but when you outsource things you don't need to do or hire someone to take things off your plate, it frees you up to focus on actually growing the business, which in all likelihood means you'll be able to get the business to the point when you can afford it and then some. 
If you're afraid to give up control, ask yourself why. Dig deep. Do you really need to be the one doing that? Can you outsource it for just a season so you can focus on the growth you need right now and then take it back over or adjust later? I did that with my podcast in the beginning. I could barely afford the editors I was using, but I really needed the hands-on support they were providing. Once I got the hang of things, I was able to adjust and lower my expenses. And because I knew more about what I was actually looking for, what I really needed, I was able to get more help at a lower price overall. Number seven, it's your business and you get to run it your way. The online space is a noisy fucking place, and it's very easy for us to see what someone else is doing, what someone is recommending, and feeling like we have to do that too. And shit, that might even happen to you when you're listening to this podcast. But ultimately, there are a lot of different ways to be successful at business. There are a lot of different definitions of success. And the benefit to being your own boss is you get to make all the decisions. Don't want to do email marketing? Don't. I mean, I obviously recommend that you do and truly believe that if you don't, you are missing out on revenue, but you can make the decision not to. Don't want to reopen your brick and mortar? Don't. Don't want to keep doing wholesale? Don't. You are in the driver's seat. Number eight, you can do hard things. So many of you started on the e-commerce journey without much experience in product or retail, but look at how fucking far you've come. You're a total kick-ass e-commerce CEO, and you continue to level up and grow not only your business, but yourself as a business leader. But every once in a while, we come up against something that feels so hard, or we're all of a sudden, we feel like we don't know what the fuck we're doing. The imposter syndrome creeps in, and for some, it's a driving force to figure shit out. And for others, it's crippling and keeps us afraid to do the things. But you can do the things. And sometimes we just need someone to remind us of that. Someone to clear the cobwebs for us and remind us that even if it doesn't work out exactly the way we thought, it's still a learning experience and it's okay to take baby steps. If that's you right now, consider this your reminder. Last but certainly not least is number nine. We can't do this alone. And the most successful people never do. And that's why the Megamind and the general mastermind principle is so powerful. If you're not already familiar, the mastermind is a concept made famous and defined by Napoleon Hill, though it existed before that. He defines the mastermind as consisting of two or more people who work in perfect harmony for the attainment of a definite purpose. Carnegie, Rockefeller, Vanderbilt. Do those names sound familiar? They were all in a mastermind. Have you ever heard the quote, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room? Or how about you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with? I personally attribute most of my success in e-commerce badassery to the people who I have surrounded myself with. My business would not be where it is today if I didn't learn from those who went before. From those who were building businesses like the ones I want. Even you listening to this podcast to learn new things about running your business is another example of how none of us do this alone. And I just want to take a moment to congratulate you for investing your time to listen to this podcast. You're a badass and I'm so proud of everyone I see who is committed to building their businesses, being a better leader and learning new things. One last note before I go. Bookmark this episode. Whenever you're feeling out of sorts in your business, aren't sure if you're on the right track or are struggling to make a decision, come back and listen to it. And that is a wrap on today's episode. Thank you so much for listening and I'll see you on the flip side. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. If you like what you heard, I'd be so grateful if you'd leave a review on Apple Podcasts and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. And if you're looking to surround yourself with more product entrepreneurs who totally get your life right now, get your booty on over to the e-commerce badassery Facebook group. Can't wait to see you there. Until next time, e-commerce friends, stay badass.